Hi all, welcome to our version 5 Virtual Cabinet webinar. So there we go. So my name is Ken Byrne. I'm one of the account managers here at Virtual Cabinet. And Dave Owen is on here too and will be joining us to talk about Virtual Cabinet and the company and the future direction and strategy and our product suite. So quite a lot of stuff to get through and quite interesting and exciting. The last bit I wanted to say is this is our first webinar of the year. We avoided doing webinars last year because I think people were just trying to cope with business and everything that was going on uh, in the world. So we do have a whole load planned for this year. And this is our first webinar of the year. And I'm going to hand it over to Dave if you're there, Dave. Yes, thanks very much, Ken. Hello, good morning to you all. Uh, it's fantastic to see you all here today, as uh, Ken mentioned. Um, uh, I'm delighted it's been so popular. We're oversubscribed. So it's lovely to see the engagement early in the year. Literally can't wait to get back to meeting you all face to face again, I have to say. It's been a long old year. But as a business, we've accelerated our growth and, and that's allowed our products to have significantly transformed over the last 12 months. But we've got a strong belief system here that we need to give back to our customers. And over the last 20 years, I can't believe I'm actually saying that out loud. It feels uh, it feels strange. It feels like yesterday that we brought VC to the market. But over the last 20 years, we've always valued our relationships, whether that's external or internal with the partners that we work with, um, as pretty much the most important cornerstone of our business. But even though we believe we're doing well, we know we can do better. So we kind of wanted to talk to you today about what we're up to and what we're doing in the future. So I've spearheaded a new era that we describe here as Project First Class. Project First Class is an integral part of our core values. Essentially, we want to make sure that every interaction with us delivers a smile. So whole tech stacks across the business in every department have been invested into to improve customer experiences so that every single touch point with our business whether that be when you're engaging with our website, our account management team, support, finance, development in the product, et cetera, is the absolute best of class. For example, we monitor every support call and what you think of our service. I'm really proud to confirm that we're executing on that promise. As you've told us that 98% of you rate our service as either good or excellent. Now, through the rest of this year, we're striving to turn that 98% to 100% excellent. Now, the eagle-eyed of you might have spotted our new brand identity before this webinar, um, but either way, we wanted to lay the foundations of a whole new exciting era while celebrating our roots. So with growth comes exciting change, and in this change, we wanted to start right at the beginning. As you can see, a change to our logo and brand identity. Our new logo, which you can see in the bottom corner of this slide, better aligns to our product and our company values. We like to think of our product and company as state of the art. We're continuing uh, to continue to innovate and, and push boundaries. We strive for more, pushing on and trying to keep current with an eye on the future. The VC symbol that you're looking at, you're probably wondering what it, what it all means, but is, it's inspired from the idea of tracing every step of a journey. It's, if you look at it, constructed from six transparent segments. Each segment depicts the C of the cabinet, of virtual cabinet, rotating forwards and backwards, symbolizing the archival past and present. The V of the virtual cabinet sits within a negative space. So it conveys the state of, of the art way of the way we, we do management and archiving of documents and information. It's about overcoming complexities, being super organized and staying, staying current. So um, all of what I'm describing here is a methodical flow from the foundations of the brand of what we're doing as we're moving forward. And this kind of filters through in everything that we do and of course into the new UI. I have to be careful that I don't take away Ken Stunder here from when he shows you the new eye in the flesh in a second, but we love Virtual Cabinet. We know you love Virtual Cabinet. So we wanted to show you that in our latest design. Not only do we get your feedback, and of course our own internal ideas, but we invested in getting an outside UI design agency that has worked with some of the most exciting companies coming out of Silicon Valley and across the world. VC is so functionally rich, it's got literally hundreds of individual pages and actions, as I'm sure you know, 
but despite all that it's been lovingly built with the most modern design principles without and this is crucial losing its familiar user feel we'll go into more of that when when we show you of course but i believe you'll find it fresh and exciting so talking of exciting we haven't just stopped there with virtual cabinet and whilst it's morphed from pure desktop product to a to a hybrid solution we've been writing our next generation of full SaaS solution called get busy if you haven't heard of it before if you're wondering what it is get busy product is built from our collective experience working with businesses to ultimately become the best of what we've done with you before but better plus the things we haven't yet done the white space areas the bits that you've been asking us for and using everything that we've learned and been motivated by um, by our complete refusal to accept a world where things are harder than they need to be is everything that we do in virtual cabinet and our products is is about making your life easier so taking a step back, there are lots of ways we could use Virtual Cabinet, but at its core, if you think about the logo that we've just talked about, we've shown you that VC is really the single source of truth. That's what you bought it for. It's the utopia for all documents as a single source of truth. However, so many of you have asked us if you could manage your content, essentially all your work, not just documents, all work and communication that ha happens outside of a document, either pre or post a document. And that's where Get Busy, which is already integrated with VC, bridges a world in which content, communication, and productivity come together in a unique way. So it could be used collectively, independently, interchangeably. It's completely fluid. All of this happening in the VC world. So it makes the important things that we and others need to do unmissable. It brings order to chaos, clarity to those who use it and increases productivity, ensures others to see, own and complete the tasks you give them, focuses on actions and outcomes and avoids work getting lost, missed or buried in email or team chat. All of those problems you're experiencing, it, it ensures that the right information is in front of the right people at the right time. And this is a key point with an equal focus on those inside and outside your business. Not many, if any, tools do that. If you can imagine a world where with Virtual Cabinet, you had that problem where you had single silos and separate from how you were trying to manage all your documentation. You had Outlook, you had you know cloud application, Dropbox, websites, you had your shared drive, you had the filing cabinet. And, there, and therein lied the problem of getting everything into one place for that file. And that's what you did with VC. But then you think outside of that for all of your work. Now we've kind of realized the pain of email that people are going, well, I'm going to build an internal communications platform like maybe Slack or Teams. And then I sort of want that sort of WhatsApp style real time business communication. But it needs to be more professional, secure and branded. So I want to maybe use an application like Trello to try and map. And sort of maximize my work and keep on top of things but then all of that then becomes single silos of information and almost the problem you had with the documents is the problem you're having with all work so what we've done is we've built all of that ecosystem to simply overlay virtual cabinet all of which has been built as a scalable cloud platform you know, cloud is absolutely at our core. You know that with Virtual Cabinet. We brought you the portal. We bought you the VC app. We brought you virtu Virtual Cabinet now. It's beautifully simple, intuitive, and rewarding to use. And of course, has security at its core. It's accessible on a wide variety of platforms from the mobile app. So with VC, it's not just about a single source of truth for your documents, but with Get Busy complementing, complementing it, it's the one place to manage communicate and store all of your work It's simply the most exciting thing that we've built if you love vc you'll love this every vc client that signs up now buys get busy just as default with virtual cabinet so if you haven't got it you haven't seen it i highly recommend you do because you're missing out without it contact your account manager we'll show you more in fact to make it easier maybe if you're interested in hearing more about get busy just type get busy in the questions gb whatever and we'll make sure an account manager follows up with more information i've spoken a bit about the past year what we've done as a business how we're moving things forward 
We've got loads of exciting developments coming with Virtual Cabinet, loads of exciting stuff coming with Get Busy. Um, but now it's time to show you, without further ado, I'm absolutely thrilled to finally share with you the new Virtual Cabinet look and feel. All right, thanks, Dave. I was a bit worried there because I thought you were going to take all my thunder away and I could have nothing else to show, but um, here we go. So this is Virtual Cabinet 5.0. By the way, before I say any more, I'll just let you absorb that. So here's Virtual Cabinet. Here's version 5.0. As you can see, we've incorporated the new logo, but more importantly, we've cleaned it up. We've taken away a lot of the colors. So that design agency, let me pop onto the intro just so you can see a bit more. So that design agency, when they looked at it, they said, look, we can see you've built this product over 10 years. We can see that you've added colors to try and uh, surface the right information to people. But basically they said, it's too busy. And their knowledge said to us, those colors actually vie for your attention at to, to start with and what you need to do is calm it down make it simpler and just surface the information that people need to see so we've kind of done that we've cleaned it up but one of the questions i've just spotted is no we haven't actually taken anything away you might see in the ribbon we've regrouped the ribbon so things like if i want to do something with the document they're all put together so like to bring the document externally to, to virtual cabinet if i want to edit or do something with the document i can do it internally so we, we've grouped all those things together but we've made it clean, we've made it calmed it down uh, slightly. So as you see, we've put little boxes, which more subtle around things like your, your documents, your tasks and your shortcuts. Again, you know where to go with them because of the familiarity with virtual cabinet, but at the same time, we've just calmed it down. So you actually want to click and you can see that I'm in my in tray and I can see that I'm on this document as well. Other thing we've done is we have introduced a hell of a load of new features. Now, I'm not going to go through every single feature as well, but I will uh, highlight uh, a couple of them. Some of those features have been in earlier versions, 4.5 or so, in a build up to get them everything ready for 5.0. One of the other things you'll notice that we've grayed out the things you cannot do with the document as well. So we're only leaving what's available to you to do. The next bit I'm going to show you is actually, I thought was a small feature, but I spoke to a client uh, last week. They were a new client. They were using virtual calendar for about two and a half weeks. And I wish I'd recorded what the client said because he spent 10 to 15 minutes telling me how good it was to be able to convert a Word document to PDF within, a vir within virtual cabinet. So that's one of the things you've got to do. I'm going to actually click click it and do it now. So I clicked the Word document. And as you can see, it's Adrian Ward to John, and I'm going to convert it uh, to PDF. Um, so what he was saying is previously he would take the document out. He would put it into uh, an Adobe converter to convert it into PDF. And uh, then when he converted into PDF, he might have realized uh, that uh, he hadn't included the last page and he'd take it again and then he'd have to save it somewhere. Then he'd send it to the client. Then he didn't know where the document was. And, and as I said, 10 or 15 minutes just telling me how that one good feature works. So there you go. I converted the document from Word to PDF. It's now version 8 and that document is there. I have been asked as well to highlight a few of the things that have been in virtual cameras. They've been there for a while, but people haven't noticed it. For instance, I've called it my lazy search. I've just put in the client name, hit search, and then found all the documents. In my case, it's 400 documents. I know in your cases, it's 3,000, 5,000 documents uh, in sometimes when you do it. And I call it my lazy search. Obviously, you can narrow down your search by putting in a general fee. Obviously, you can narrow down your search by putting in a document date and let's do a, a date range and let's do it from, shall we say, uh, the start of February to the current date, which is today, uh, and I'm going to hit search, and that narrows down my search. And you might do it, and that's lovely. I've got a few documents in there that I can go along and I can, I can play with. What you can do is you can actually save that search. You can say, actually, I might come back and I might need to work on these over the next while. So um, I can actually save this search and actually type it in name and those searches are there and then you can go and grab them straight away. The other thing, the other thing is that you can, um, once you've added a save search, you can go. So a typical scenario, you're working on something, someone comes along and says, hang on a minute, can you go along and can you find another document from another client right now? And so I will, so I'll go and find another client. Uh, again, I'll just do a quick, as I call it, lazy search. 
I'll find the document I'm looking for, I'll manipulate it, I'll do it, I'll send it via the portal, whatever, whatever you want to do with it. And you go, oh, what was I working on? Well, we now have introduced forward and back browser searching in, within Virtual Cabinet. So you can click on back and it will bring me back to the last search I was doing, which is really, really useful with it there. Obviously, I'd saved this search. So even if I cleared everything and went away um, from today and go back tomorrow, I can go along and just do one click, go back to my save search and actually find all the documents I, I want. So, so far, so good. The other thing I wanted to do, if I just clear my search again, so manipulating uh, documents, um, and we'll go actually back to the same client because I want to get all the documents out in one go. This has been here for a while. I'm trying to surface this information to clients, which is really useful. As you see, we've now written filter across the top of all these documents. So in this white space, for instance, if I want to see general document fees, I'll just type in the word fee because I'm lazy uh, and it will bring back fee anywhere in the word of that document. And actually, if I want to see invoice, I'm just going to type in because I'm lazy as well. And it will bring back all the invoices and you do that across all columns and all columns. And again, it just if you don't even have to type the full word. So I've shown you quite a few little bits and pieces that we've added into the product. Um, the other thing that I wanted to show you was something that is a real bugbear of ours uh, in the sense that it's called document retention. And the reason I say it's a bugbear, it's a bit like every time we mention it to a client, it's like school when you're on a Friday, you're packing your bags to go home and the teacher says, oh, hang on a second, what about homework for the weekend? Everyone rolls their eyes and they go, oh God, not again. And I think document retention has become like that in, in every organization. Everyone knows we need to do it. Everyone spent a lot of time when GDPR was around writing the document retention policies. And so many people don't actually do anything about it or have manual processes. So I spoke to an insolvency client it was the end of last year, we're talking about something completely different. It was about how they manage their emails, actually. And towards the end of the conversation, we just happened to talk about what she was doing next. She said, oh, I've got a meeting with the compliance department. And the compliance department con consists of three people, and they met two days at the end of every quarter to manage what documents uh, they had and what ones they should destroy, what ones they should archive, etc. And they used that um, Excel spreadsheet during those months to gather the information they needed to sit down together and spend two days doing it. And while she was saying all that, I said, what if I could say to you, I could save you six days, at least six days per quarter? And she said, what do you mean? I said, well, we can build that retention policy in. We can build the retention policy in to the point that as you add a document into Virtual Cabinet on a particular index, we'll say, right, we'll give that document a life cycle. And that document life cycle, then we can either archive that document, we can surface the information, say that this document has reached its end by date, we could put it in a to be deleted or to be destroyed cabinet, or we can go all the way to actually destroying that document automatically. And that goes across every ind indices as well. And um, we can also, integrate, and I'll talk about integrations a little bit later on, with your practice management system. And if you make a mark on your practice management system, the most obvious easy example is something like an ex-client one. If you mark a client as an ex-client, we can take those documents of the ex-clients and move them in into an archive cabinet. And after seven years in the accountancy world, after seven years, we can actually destroy them. So we can do anything you want. We can take your retention policy that you've got there now and put them into virtual cabinet and manage that thing automatically. Now, as I said, most companies especially high up, and the directors of the company understand it's really, really important to be compliant, understand that it's really important to have a compliance policy. And then when it filters down to the actual people using it, you're actually wasting time and not being efficient by manually running those processes. So please uh, take a look at that. To the point that we've actually got a document retention webinar coming up. Um, I can't remember the date, but I have it written down a little bit later on as well. I, while I was talking, I just glanced <laughs> at the questions uh, that have come in and someone spotted something and they've asked me to show it. So I'm just going, I'm going to do it quite now. So for instance, while I was clicking uh, on a document, someone said they spotted the send to get busy. What does that do? So Dave mentioned that we have a link between virtual cabinet and get busy. And this is all about virtual cabinet 5.0. It's all about surfacing, make this clean, making it efficient, making it much, much easier to choose, much easier on the eyes. But I will show you this just quickly. So if I grab this document, I can actually send this file to Get Busy. It opens up Get Busy automatically. I can actually send this to Dave, which I'll do right now. Let me ask him a random question. Can you use 
get busy on. If I wanted to, I could, I could actually make this uh, add a signature into the document and that kind of stuff. I'm not going to do it. Let's put it as due date tomorrow and I hit create. So what I've done there is I've taken the document out of virtual cabinet, put it into get busy, add a document, send a task to Dave. Sugar, I should have written test. Dave will see that in a minute and actually think it's something I have actually asked him to do. We have this link from there to, to other bits of software. So our integrations are really popular. And one of the things we've always done within Virtual Cabinet is we integrated Virtual Cabinet with tons of practice management system, systems. So for instance, with Virtual Cabinet, this is linked. So this information is linked in a practice management system. And so as you type in the client name, you can actually go along and look in the practice management system and we surface the information in into virtual cabinets. So that link is really important. That's part of the integration. We have tons of integrations with tons of practice management systems. We're always working on them at a time. And actually if I jump back to the presentation because I wanted to actually talk about that. Some of the stuff that I want to show you on virtual cabinet 5.0, which is talk about what it looks like, the feel. We have not taken anything away, but we've added a lot. There's a lot of stuff. Um, okay, so I've shown you about the searching and uh, the back and browser section, the, the column filtering, and we talked about document retention. Um, I didn't mention the port at all, which I'll, I should mention now. There is multiple branding um, on the portal. What that means, if you take a document, the portal publish it. I'll just make this screen bigger. And um, I can have multiple brands on the portal. So for instance, let's think about, let's think of a firm, let's think of a client who has an accountancy arm, they've got an insolvency arm, and they've got a financial services arm. Maybe there's three companies that have been merged or they bought each other, and each of those still retain their individual brands. You can now publish via those brands. You can give people the choice. So I could only be able to publish through, through virtual cabinets, and my colleague Lee could only be able to publish through his brand, uh, Linton House, I picked there for old time's sake. Or you can have a choice to be able to do it. And to all intents and purposes, your end user, your end client will see that as a brand, even though it's all coming from the same virtual cabinet. So that's there, available to use. The other thing is we increase the document size to 250 megabytes. So especially for accountancy clients, that pretty much covers all things like Sage backups and stuff can be, can be passed through the, the portal as well. We brought the message tab from the portal into Virtual Cabinet itself, so you don't have to jump out and you can actually see it there as well. And the auto-publishing. So again, this always comes from conversations with, with clients, but in auto-publishing, it means that if you have to regularly send a document or a set of documents or a letter or whatever, to uh, clients, you can do that automatically. You can create the document in your practice management system outside virtual cabinet, it doesn't really matter. You can create one document to go to a thousand clients or a thousand individual documents to go to a thousand clients. And you can automatically take those documents, index them into virtual cabinet where you want them to index to and publish them via the portal. And you can add a note to them and you can ask for a signature, et cetera. We can do all that. It's a bespoke service. It doesn't come out of the box because we have to understand what you want to achieve, but we can do that. And we've done that for multiple sites. Uh, and again, um, I have a client doing that it's financial services who sends out, um, I forget the name of the document. I think it's evaluation or, or evaluation update either once a month or once a quarter. And they now do that automatically. He says he, he saves at least two days a month just to be able to do that because they can just basically produce all the documents, drop them into a watch folder, and then virtual camera takes over and does everything else uh, as well. So I kind of mentioned integrations. So one of the things Virtual Cam has always done is we've always gone into the marketplace, seen what systems you use and say, okay, let's look and see if we can do an integration with that system. And actually, it's a really good point. Dave mentioned about get busy, uh, stick it in the question box. If you're using uh, any integration, it is well worth talking to your account manager and asking them about your integration because we are continually improving in integration. So some of the integrations that we're working on at the moment, they're to a lesser extent. The Postworks one is, is interesting. So lots of clients now use Postworks to still send out physical letters to the client. I know it's quite popular, like in the insolvency market. That Dave will probably correct me and tell me there's a whole lot of other markets that, that use it too. We have an integration now, so you can take from virtual camera, you create your documents, have them in virtual cabinet, and literally one click, you can fire them out to Postworks into your Postbox built in, in Postworks, and they take over from there and go out. And that's 
recorded at the audit trial. So that's a fantastic integration. We're working on that integration to be able to be able to pull stuff from Postworks as well. So it's it's continually a continuous development. I better not go through every single <laughs> integration here, or we'll be here all day. In the background, with the build of Virtual Cabinet 5. Point zero. There has been a lot of other things to do with systems performance. One of the things, once you're on version five, once you increase, once you upgrade from version five after that, it's really, really fast because we've changed the way we update some SQL tables uh, on the upgrade. And um, so that's going to that's going to benefit everyone going forward. We've done a lot of improvements around Outlook and email flagging and that kind of stuff where we're always kind of stymied slightly because it's Outlook and so we have to kind of work with Microsoft as well. And the capture services and Exchange Online, we've improved the authentication. Office 365, Exchange Online using, I've written it down, TLS 1.2 to uh, encrypt. So that is w much more secure than the, the previous methods. Um, it does need an admin to log on uh, to, to do it, but again, support can show you how, how, how to do that. Um, and so there's lots of minor changes as well. And um, I had a client who jumped at one of the early adopters on version 5.0. And I gave him a ring last week just to say, hey, how are you feeling it? Uh, how, how are things? Did you like it, et cetera? And he said, he said, what have you guys done? And I thought, uh oh, I'm going to be in trouble here. Uh, and I said, why? And he said, it is so much faster. Now, I will not guarantee that you'll all go to five and it'll all be beautiful and faster, but we have made lots of system performance improvements uh, in the background. So I know for certain sites, it will be much faster to, to use. So I think that's kind of everything I wanted to talk about. I just wanted to give you a feel for what version five looked like. I wanted to cover some of the new kind of features that are in there and they're all in the release notes. I'm just going to jump on to the next slide. Hopefully Dave is still there to see if there's any more questions. Yeah, there's been quite a few questions in and we've already sort of run over our time, so we're not going to be able to answer all of them, but I think we can maybe pick off a few that seem to be the most common. Uh, so at least we handle the majority. Ken, there seems to be quite a lot around when is version five going to be available? Oh, OK, so we have kind of rules in place where we have enough people called early adopters who jump on version five. It's used in enough environments that we're confident that there's no bugs and all that kind of stuff. Um, I spoke to a product manager this morning just to double check, and he estimates two to three weeks away. So very, very close to it being released as a full version. OK, great. So we've also got quite a few questions around content searching. Is content searching uh, still available in Virtual Cabinet? Yeah, so I, I always say to people, it doesn't quite work this way, but the best way of thinking about it is when you index the document in the background, we OCR the document. Uh, so every character on every line on every document with it in Virtual Cabinet. So yeah, it works across every single document you've got in there. And there's one here I just might as well answer on that, yep. that related one that I've just skimmed past. It says, uh, can you OCR a PDF? The answer is yes. So when you scan a document in, if it's converted to PDF or automatically defaults as PDF when it goes into VC, we've got text layered imaging as content searching within PDF as well. It's been it's been in there a, a little while now, but maybe not everyone's aware of it. So 100 percent that is available. Some questions around signatures, because I think you mentioned that, Ken. Yeah, saying, I, did. I, mentioned, uh, I mentioned it when I was showing the, um, the get busy bit that someone had asked as well. Yeah. So, yeah, there's some questions around um, can we use uh, signatures with virtual cabinet documents? So, again, yes, 100 percent. So not only have we got the portal style quick signing, so if you do have the portal already, you'll be familiar with the process that you can publish a document and just tick a box and someone can log in as a third party and click sign and it puts a legally binding digital signature into the documents. Uh, but a lot of our VC clients have been asking us for a, a sort of a wet signature where they could either scroll their, their scribble their screen signature over the document live on the screen or they could just type their name in and it would create a digital image of their signature um, we've built that within get busy so you have both options so if you don't already have the portal you can use get busy as a complementary signature tool as well as everything else that it does but if you're using the portal we've got wet signatures in get busy as well um, that is fantastic, Dave. Thank, thank you very much. 
I just thought I would show because I, I sent you that get busy as a joke and I said is it working Android and you've answered, you've answered back uh, with me saying yeah um, actually it is a good point to make here um, <laughs> stop it we normally by the way when we're doing demos and stuff we put tests before everything so we know that we're just testing rather than actual real business process but I did forget to write a test there I'm sure Dave will admonish me at, at some stage uh, later on it's Get busy to full SaaS product, so Android, Apple, Microsoft, Windows, it will work uh, on everything. I do have one final slide, which is some upcoming webinars. I'll talk about the retention one, which is uh, on April 13th. I knew I had it written down because I would forget. And um, that's going to be hosted by Lee. I, as I said, it's it's probably a topic where everyone hangs their head and goes, oh, bloody hell. But we can automate that. We can take all the pain out of it and we can just make it much easier to be basically automatically compliant. Dave, do you want to talk about the, the next one on, the, on March the 23rd? Sure. Something slightly different here. So all of our webinars so far have been sort of educational around the product and the business and what we're doing for you, which is great. And we'll continue to do that, like we've spoken about with Ken earlier in the conversation. But what we're trying to also do is bring some third parties in for thought leadership. And seeing as we have a lot of financial services related businesses and your clients are probably very much uh, interested in what's happening with their money at the moment and um, what should I invest it in? Should I leave it in the bank? Is, you know, with inflation potentially coming around the corner, are they getting the best bang for their buck? And what we have been working with or with Blend Network, um, they are a peer-to-peer -peer provider in property lending and um, they're doing a thought leadership piece for you to show potentially how you could talk to your clients about this particular subject. It's quite new to a lot of people. So um, it's very interesting. It's, it's very much part of the tech space. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's obviously a tenuous link to the, to the software and things that we do in the tech industry. So uh, Roxana is going to be doing that. She's the CSO from Blend Network. It's really exciting. I highly recommend you just uh, pop along and uh, see what that's all about. Okay, that's great, Dave. Um, there are a lot more questions that we don't have time to answer. Um, so we will record all the questions. We will fire them out to the account managers uh, and we'll all get back to you. There is a recording. Sorry, someone has this and I, I mentioned at the start, but there, there will be a recording available. We will send it out to everyone. And if you do know other people that want to see it, etc., we can we can do that uh, as well. I would say, as I mentioned, Virtual Cabinet 5.0 will be fully released in two to three weeks' time. I would prefer to upgrade to it and we're getting lots of good feedback. And all, as Dave mentioned in his discussion, is that a lot of the changes that we've made are, have been driven by your, the clients. In fact, all the changes, everything we do is, is driven by clients. It's either our ideas to the marketplace or the marketplace coming back to us saying, can you, can you do things? So that communication from you guys is really important. Um, but we've built this, this 5.0, as I said, to show you that we're still investing heavily in the product and to bring it on onto the next level uh, in the future. Um, I think that's everything I've got to say. Thank you very much for logging on. I said thank you very much for the interactive with the questions and have a good rest of the week. Thank you very much, all. Thanks, all.